economic freedom as well. For 60 decades, for six decades now, the people of Kenya have worked hard with admirable diligence and unwavering determination to perfect the political freedom of their nation through sustained socio-economic progress. In this manner, Kenyans have reiterated their commitment to true freedom by complementing political freedom with freedom from want, freedom from suffering, freedom from ignorance, and freedom from indignity. Our forefathers' historic struggle to vindicate our God-given rights of self-determination entailed tremendous sacrifice and immense determination against a colossal adversary. Ultimately, they triumphed. Similarly, our war against underdevelopment, poverty, unemployment, indignity, and vulnerability has been daunting. Yet, we have made steady progress year after year over six years of freedom. At the heart of our struggle for freedom, both before and after independence, is the distinctively Kenyan spirit of determination that is nevertheless flexible, consistency which is innovative, pragmatism that is also hopeful, and faith strong enough to take chances. The sacrifices required were inspired by a spirit that is truly unique, which transcends ordinary decision making. We recognize that spirit even now. It lives in the heart of every Kenyan who wakes up early to give their best, try their luck, knock on doors, and chase their dreams. We see it every day when we see traders, artisans, farmers, and other workers braving the scorching sun and enduring cold rain in pursuit of livelihood. We also witness in its, the teach, in teachers, nurses, police officers, extension officers, and technicians who go far from their comfort zone, often beyond the call of duty, to attend to Kenyans in their communities throughout all villages, all corners of our great republic. This noble ethic of willingness to struggle by working hard and embracing risk and of determination to achieve positive change in great leaps as well as in little installments has brought us far and will take us beyond the horizon of our destiny. Today, I join all Kenyans to celebrate our magnificent collective achievements and the spirit of brave endeavor which inspired them 60 years ago and sustain us today. This celebration speaks to the sustained effort we have invested in perfecting our national mandate of self-government. I will highlight the wonderful ways in which we have stewarded political freedom into democratic maturity, enhanced economic freedom by empowering enterprise and expanded social freedom by securing dignity. We must never forget that until fairly recently, our country's politics was divisive, violence, do or die affair by which neighbors, colleagues, and even relatives were incited into hatred in the name of political competition. In this dark era, the tribe was the fundamental term of all political engagement and the master variable of democratic contest. Many highly respected experts and eminent persons confidently affirmed that Kenyan politics is inherently tribal, and many leaders designed their political parties, policies, and campaigns on the basis of raw political appeals. Leaders also made sure that political discourse revolved around personalities and the private interests of a few privileged individuals and not the aspirations of the majority. 
some used political parties as political vehicles to access the high table where important decisions were made and exploited their ethnic constituencies to negotiate a bigger share of public resources as well as positions of power and privilege in the service of private ends. For decades, Kenyans understood that this perverse political culture not only defiled our democracy, but also obstructed the spirit of daring and achievement, arresting our collective progress. The people of Kenya, therefore, yearned for freedom from the tyranny of political personality cults, toxic tribal discourse, and the violence they engendered. They desired a more unifying, cosmopolitan framework of engagement which promoted the expression of their shared aspirations, encouraged inclusive negotiations, and a collective means of pursuing them. In the last general election, the people of Kenya finally broke free. The campaign was conducted purely on the basis of important national issues, foremost of which were economic issues. Not only did Kenyans reject the old divisive politics of tribe and tribal chiefs, but they also demanded and interrogated well-considered party manifestos with detailed plans for economic transformation. As a result, although the election was closely, closely contested, it was the most peaceful in the multi-party era in Kenya. And I want to congratulate all Kenyans for being participants in this great feat. Our public discourse and political discussion and the agenda of social debate has changed for good. Substantive policy issues continue to define the national conversation well beyond the election. At the moment, there is a robust debate on the finance bill taking place everywhere in this country, in churches, social places, formal and informal workplaces, all media platforms, and busy markets, as well as in urban and rural gatherings. We are truly a trailblazing nation. Many countries struggle in vain to generate a national debate on public financing, taxation, or other policy issues. In Kenya, we have easily sustained intense discourse on the finance bill and the affordable housing policy for weeks now. The debate has remained issue-oriented and there is no hint of divisive ethnic rhetoric at all. The cost of living is keeping all leaders, including myself, awake, and this is precisely as it should be. Superficially, the intense national debate on housing is not about whether it is a tax or a contribution. Their attention sharply focused on the housing contributions is an implicit expression of ownership. People desire better information and stronger assurance regarding the, the custody, security, investment, and return on their money. That is phenomenal. People are interested. How will their money be? Will it be safe? Will it be stolen? How is it going to benefit them? And how are they going to get a fair return for their contribution? I want to assure the people of